Hey, TBE fam, and whoever else is watching, I just, uh, it's about seven o'clock in the morning. I'm here at the church setting up. Got here a little bit early, drinking some coffee. Got everything ready to go. Got um, disinfectant, hand sanitizer, got everything cleaned. Um, we are having service tonight at the Blueprint Experience. Uh, Food and Fellowship is still at five o'clock and Worship Experience at six. And I just wanted to talk to you guys just for a minute. I've been seeing a lot of stuff on Facebook um, that I just wanted to address really quick. Uh, and, and not just Facebook, all social media. But one, um, I've seen several posts and have even seen uh, as far as <clears throat> some uh, ministers put on about the coronavirus and saying that it's the wrath of God and um, they're telling everybody they need to repent and, um, you know, there's check to see if there's any sin in their life and all this. Um, I just want to, I want to clear this up. I want to answer kind of this question with another question is, you know, if we're in Christ and God is our, our father and he is a loving father, um, well, let me ask you this. If you, if you are a parent, I'm sure that you feel the same way that I do when my kids are sick. And that is, man, if I could take that from them, if I could take that sickness, if I could be sick instead of them, I would do it. You know, I, I, I would much rather be sick than my kids be sick. And I would never, I would never wish my kids were sick, um, no matter what they did no matter how upset I was at them. Um, I would never want them to be sick. I would never take a virus and give it to them. So I want to tell you this, that God's not mad at you. He loves you. He's not, this virus is not from God. He's not trying to give this to you. It's not a punishment. Um, our God is a loving father. He loves you so much. So I just wanted to squash that really quick. And uh, the next thing, God kind of changed uh, what I was going to say when I sat down to record this. Um, I've also seen a lot of stuff with uh, people uh, quoting uh, 2 Timothy 1.7 um, that God hasn't given us a um, spirit of fear. And man, that is so true. That is 100% true. But God kind of changed my assignment as I sat down to record this. And I just feel like there's some, some of you out there right now and you're like, you know the scriptures. You know what 2 Timothy 1.7 says, and you're just still scared, and you have so much fear. Like you don't want to leave your house. Um, you are constantly looking stuff up on your phone or on your computer or watching it on TV, and there's just so much fear going through you right now. And you're a Christian. You know, you're a child of God. And now not only do you have fear of this, you have guilt because you know you you don't ha you don't you shouldn't have fear. Now that shouldn't be something. You should be able to cling on to the those verses that are being put out there. And you know you shouldn't. You just like man, I'm I'm scared and now I'm ashamed. I don't even deserve to be a Christian. Well, I just want to bring this up. I want to uh, look at uh, John chapter twenty and starting with verse nineteen. Um, it talks about the disciples and Jesus had he had died. He had been buried. Uh, this was the third day. The disciples, we find them locked in a room. They do what they they really did what a lot of us are doing right now. We're afraid. We have fear, and we go into our house and we lock the deadbolt. That's what the disciples did. Now, the the fear that's going on right now with this virus is not. It don't even compare to the fear the disciples felt right then. Because not only did they think that people were looking to kill them, they just, they were thinking, well, we just wasted three and a half years. We just followed this guy for three and a half years and now he's dead. You know, what? there was doubt. Did, did we really see him turn water into wine? Was Lazarus really dead? Did he really spit on, uh, uh, spit in the mud and rub it in and put it on that dude's eyes and he could see. I mean, like, they're starting to question everything, all right? And these guys, they, like, walked with Jesus in the flesh. God was skin on. They walked with him. They talked with him. They saw this firsthand. And they still had doubt. 
and fear, huge fear. But what happened? Well, of course, Jesus rose from the grave and the Bible talks in John chapter 20, Jesus just walks into the room. He walks through that locked door. It, he didn't wait for the disciples to not have fear, all right? He didn't wait for the disciples to calm down. He wasn't like, well, I'm going to wait and see if they calm down so I can go in there. No, he didn't. He just walked through that locked door with all that fear in the room. Jesus walked in. And I'm going to tell you right now, guys, he's going to do the same thing for you. You're sitting there and you're like, I don't know how to get rid of this fear. You've, you've prayed, you've, um, you've, you've read scripture, you've put on praise and worship music, you've done all of that. You've talked to your pastor and your friends and it's just like you still have so much fear. And now you have so much guilt. But I'm gonna tell you right now, we serve an awesome, loving God who will walk through the locked door of the house that you're sitting in right now with a deadbolt, with whatever, he'll walk through and he'll help you and he'll be there with you. And I want you to notice this, that when Jesus walked into that room, he didn't start yelling at them. He wasn't like, how dare you? You're supposed to be out ministering to people. You're supposed to be in the synagogues. You're supposed to be in the streets telling people that I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to be rose from the dead. You're supposed to be doing this. Jesus didn't even do that at, at all. What did he do? He walked in. He said, peace, peace be with you. In fact, Jesus had to say it two times. That's how, how, how much fear there was in those disciples. He just walked in and he said, hey, guys, hey, look, it's me. Calm down. All right. I'm here. Touch my hands. Look at my side. He didn't give them four points to evangelism or seven reasons they shouldn't fear. He didn't do any of that. And listen, I'm, please do not take this as me talking bad about anybody that is putting verses about you should not fear because they are 100% correct, all right? But what do you do when you just can't shake the fear off? And I believe that, um, I believe those scriptures are true. And, but just right now, my assignment's different. I have a different assignment, and that's to come to you and say, if you're, if you're afraid right now, and now then you have guilt of being afraid, he still loves you. He does. And he's going to walk through that locked door in a room full of fear for you because he loves you. He's not mad at you. He's not looking at you and frowning. He's not upset with you. He loves you.